And we're live. Oh my God, what are we doing here? Uh, my, what are we question? doing? Um, Good to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, those of you watching, when you are, um, do you want to know the best kind of nuts? Perfect amount for your keto lifestyle. Stay tuned. See what I We're talking there. about nuts today? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. Yes. Uh, nuts and seeds. So uh, very important. We've got a. Uh, uh. No, I was just talking to my uh, trainer I've been working with, and I was telling him that because he was keto for a very long time. He's not anymore, but he was. And one of the things we were talking about is how you can't mess around. And when I was living in Hawaii and I was eating keto, I would still munch a whole bunch of macadamia nuts or almonds. And apparently, like, you're not supposed to do that. I'm so glad you're here because this episode is for you. I got to point the opposite way I want, but I'm getting better at that. That's you the only reason you're glad I'm here or you're just not yeah. just glad I'm, I'm here because you value me as a person. Stick around. I'm so glad you're here. This episode is for you. Okay. But because you value me and you care about me, that's why yes, you're glad I'm you here. Know, we're going to just... share a little bit later. Like we're getting great reviews and they, they oh. love you. I mean, especially last week's episode, the ladies just were like, Simon's stuff brings all the milkshakes to the ladies' yard. I don't remember what they said, but well, uh, um, yeah, you know, I still yeah. got it, eh? Yeah, <laughs> I still well, got hey, it. <laughs> hey, everyone, welcome, welcome to Keto Chat Live. I am your host, Carol Freeman, board certified keto nutrition specialist, and here with the one, the only, the fabulous. I am Simon Kaufman, unemployed radio host, house sitting. With no car. No, that's not true. I have a car, but it's just not. It sounded better. It sounded better to just make myself a victim. Oh my gosh. All right. Don't make me coach you on that. So, uh, but also, you know, comedian extraordinaire. Uh, yeah. Stand up comic, baby. Going to be in Vegas next week doing some shows. And then I got a gig in Florida, June 1st. I'm in the uh, glorious metropolis of Everett, Washington this weekend. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, you've heard of Vegas, but have you done Everett? <laughs> that re that reminds me of a um, back before. So I moved to Seattle in 1993, uh, long time ago. Oh, look who's here! Look who's here! Sue's nice. back more. Sue, all the way from London, is with us. Our original fan here. Welcome, Sue. Hey, so Sue. I, I, in um, probably like 1991 or 92, I was living in Oregon, very small town, and I ran into somebody that- What said town? Was, um, Corvallis. I lived in Philomath, which most people know where Corvallis is because it's where Oregon State University is. And um, so my family had all moved up to Everett, Washington, which it, for those of you that don't know, is a suburb north of um, Seattle. And so I met this guy at a college party and Ooh. he said he lived in, he was from Seattle and I'm like, oh my God, my family lives up there. And he's like, oh really? Where do they live? And I said, oh, they live in Everett. And he's like, oh, that is not Seattle. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, oh, gross. So yeah, he really showed you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Sue's got a good reminder there for you, Simon. Nice. Definitely. So don't forget, Simon, what you do in Vegas stays in Vegas. So. Don't worry, I'm bringing uh, chloroseptic wipes to <laughs> make sure I nothing bad happens. A bu bubble for your body. But, um, well, hey, anyways, welcome for, to, for our show. Real quick medical disclaimer here so that nobody gets confused that we're- Oh, yeah, don't be confused. So this show is meant for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice nor intended to diagnose, treat, cure any condition. If you have any medical condition, illness, disease, or are taking any medications, please contact your doctor for questions and concerns. And uh, yeah, go keto. <laughs> uh, question of the day. Uh What's your favorite nut or seed? So those of you watching, share in the comments. This is an interactive show if this is your first time watching us here. Um, how about you, Simon? What's your favorite? Favorite? I mean, I love seed? sunflower seeds. I can do the okay. whole bag in one drive. Do I you... do that a lot when I'm on the road doing comedy because it keeps me awake. Maybe it's the salt. I don't know. Or maybe it's just the action of doing something. Yeah. 
but were, were you maybe you were actually born to be a baseball player instead or well uh yeah i mean i did play little league now that you asked i was uh yeah i did i played for the cobras of montlake and the wow. uh, i think i played for rainier one year and yeah definitely uh the definitely cobras. was a real real hot commodity in the uh, Seattle Little League circuit at one what, point. What position did you play? I played T-ball. I did. did you Were you the T that they hit the ball off of? or? Uh, yeah, right. No, I was, uh, yeah, played T-ball. You don't even, six. You don't even, Actually, you I have hilarious stories from T-ball, which I can't share on this. Yeah. <laughs> but we, uh, we got a new uh, viewer here. We've got Fit to Fat Gabby. Um, her favorite. Fat to order. fit, not fit to fat. Oh, just fat. saying. Oh, that's a different person that was doing that thing. Uh, fat to fit Gabby. Thank you for catching that. Uh, in Which order, is better <laughs> than the reverse? Ca cashews, pistachios, and pecans. Pistachios good, are legit. Yeah, that's Gabby. a good order. I think. Yeah, I might I might have the same list, but a toss up. Oh no, macadamias are macadamias are okay, on so, mine as well. All right, so give me your top three. You're on a desert island, you only get three nuts. I can three three um like fifty-five gallon barrels that I have to live off of the rest of my life on the island. Three yes. nuts. Okay. What um, is your your top three? And they have to be in okay. order, like Gabby said. Okay. The biggest barrel is gonna be macadamias. Uh okay. hands down. Um, You're fancy. Let's go, yeah, let's go with pistachios number two, and then pecans number three. And it, and you know, depending on where you live in the world, it's pe pecans or pecans. So, yeah, I think I would be sunflower seeds, macadamians, and almonds. Okay. All right. Feel free to chime in here. This is kind of a trick topic because actually we're going to talk about how you should avoid nuts and seeds on keto for, uh, I tricked you at the top. Ha ha. Oh yeah. That's ha, good. You get them all excited. Ha ha ha. ha. Get it out of your system now. Cause we're going to take them out in, in a little bit. Oh yeah. So. Do you weigh food in front of a hungry person? <laughs> Do you eat ice cream in front of a small child and don't give them any also? Ooh, look at Jay West has got a, got, she says, oh, okay. It stimulates the vagus nerve. So maybe that's what's keeping you awake. So if it wasn't okay. for sunflower seeds, you would just crash your car on those long drives, huh? Well, but you know, because you're on, yeah, you're on the road for a long time and you want to stay awake. And whenever I feel myself dozing off, I do, I get sunflower seeds. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's my vagus nerve. Yeah. As Jay says. Cool. You, uh, shell I always thought it might've been like the salt or it might've been the um, action of doing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now maybe it's uh, the vagus nerve, which actually I read a book about that recently. It's vagal nerve, polyvagal theory is a new thing out now. So, okay. You're yeah. in Seattle again. So like poly is a big thing out there. So I can see why yeah. you'd be well, that's polyamorous that. theory, yeah. not polyvagal theory. Oh, they're not um, related. I bet but when related. you combine the two, oh, let me tell you. Yeah. Oh boy, does that get crazy? Poly is Polly big Amory. out here? What's that? Is polyamory big in Seattle or just non-commitment? Oh, both. how do you know I, you're polyamorous and not just like you know play in the field? How do you know the difference? Well, because polyamory is actually having multiple relationships that they know about each other. We're okay, not just picking up like people at the pool hall yeah. on Fridays. Being a player <laughs> is uh, just like, hey, girl, I'll call you. Sometime. Okay. It, and then at midnight going, you up? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Look at everybody knows about this Vegas trip, huh? So well, stimulate the Vegas while driving to Vegas. Well, Simon's stimulate the Vegas in Vegas. <laughs> Simon's not going to be driving to Vegas, but I think I'm going to be driving to Vegas. So does that mean I yes. need sunflower seeds? Oh, I'm avoiding. Well, we're going to find out now. by the end of the episode. How about that? Yes. Stay tuned. <laughs> Surprise. Knowing you, Carol, you're going to make life miserable for all of us. First, you took away alcohol. Then you <laughs> took away sweeteners. It's going to be a twist. Then you ending. took away joy and love from the world. At, at the end of this, Fonzie jumps the shark in the in his motorcycle or whatever that famous episode was. So, Oh, no. Okay. So, 
Uh, Sue says, have you tried flax seeds? They taste like nuts, but they're healthy for, uh, nope, 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 no flax seeds. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm the ruler here. I get to make the decisions. Yes. I do not recommend flax seeds as a human food. Uh, more of an overlord than a ruler, Carol. Yeah. I, f I see you as more of an overlord. I was not even elected. I just elected myself here. I'm, oh, uh, <laughs> that's convenient. Flax seeds actually are, uh, they were never a food crop, actually. So they were grown originally to make linseed oil, which is then turned into um, a very potent varnish for furniture. That's part of why, like, you have to be so careful with the oil from flaxseed is because it's not really stable once it's extracted from those seeds. Um, the hard shell on those really humans aren't really meant to digest those. And they're really high in uh plant estrogens as well, which men especially don't need estrogen. So yeah, um, but maybe you get hungry when you varnish the furniture, then what? <laughs> Your insides will be so glossy. <laughs> yeah. Some they people like a man with glossy insides. You could set a glass on your neck and it would just not even stain it. So yeah. Important. Sue, what are your favorite kinds of nuts besides flax seeds? Let's, let's pick one that Sue's always got the most interesting answers for all these. I I'm so glad she's here. Even though I got to reject her suggestion sometimes. I know. You know but <laughs> Maybe she needs a moment after this uh, rejection she suffered. Uh, <laughs> the hands of Carol. Well, she's like halfway around the planet from us. So I think it takes like four minutes for that signal to go there and back for her to be able to respond. So um, more flaxseed. Boost your signal. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, 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 we do have an interesting article, though. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like the article I found? Yes, I love it. We um, like to start off with the article. Oh boy, Sue's, what's Sue going to say now here? I think when Simon goes to Vegas, it won't be the chestnuts. <laughs> we know why. We know why Sue's here. Um, <laughs> did, did somebody uh, say chest? That's all I heard. You lost. You had me at chest. I, you know, my, my love of comedy goes way back. Um, I'm not going to say most of the jokes that were in these books, but my, my grandmother gave my dad joke books for his birthday or Christmas or something. I don't know what it was, but they were called truly tasteless jokes. Okay. Really bad. Most of them today, you would get totally canceled if you said you any get of them. canceled. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my dad had like three, uh, three of them in a series. And so, um, you know, there's a joke about chestnuts that's in that book. Um, one of those books. So, okay. Oh, we got Sue back. Susan back from Chicago. Cheers. All right. The gang's all here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we had a, didn't we have another Sue last time too? Susie or something. Um, cause remember Sue and Susan. Sues. What, what, what were our catchphrases from last time? Boy. Uh, two Sue crew, uh, two live, live crew, two, two Sue crew. crew. <laughs> two Sue crew. Yeah. Two Sue. There uh, we go. All right, Sue. Two live Sue. Two live Sue. That's what it was. It was two live Sues. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And we were just theorizing if we got a third, we'd be in trouble. So, um, so Susan Rapp, what are your favorite kinds of nuts? If you were stranded on a desert island and all you could eat were three different kinds of nuts, what would you have? Hey, Nancy's back too. All right, Nancy, welcome back. And you have to also answer the question. Three yeah, nuts. Yeah, Nancy, what are your favorite nuts? And they have to be in order of importance. Yes. Wait, with a we have standards. Scenario is you're st stranded on a desert island the rest of your life. What are the three <laughs> nuts that you can you're gonna take with you? <laughs> you somehow like what is this scenario? You uh, you uh, were on a airplane flying someplace and you were transporting your cargo of your three favorite nuts, and uh, you your plane goes down on a desert island and there's the nuts you got to live with the rest of your life. Um, Maybe, oh, you know what? It's a trick question. Why don't you take your family in one of your barrels, your favorite nuts? Wait, what? Your favorite nuts? My favorite nuts would be my family. Oh, yeah. Well, I've met your family. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, your family's great. But I don't, I won't, I don't want to eat them. So, um, no. Well, it depends how long you're on the island. If you've seen yeah. that movie Alive or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's got morbid quick. All right, let's get to the article. What do we have? This is actually an interesting article. I have not read it. I cataloged it. Perfect. Um, okay. We're training you to keep an eye out for these things. I put that link in the uh, chat, both on YouTube and 
it's going not in the Facebook group if you're watching from there, but it's actually on my Facebook page. So YouTube or Facebook page, I put the link in there. So Simon found this article. Uh, if you guys are new to the show, we alternate. I find a scientific one one week, and then Simon finds another one that randomly pops up in his life. Whatever, so dude, this is scientific too. Yeah, the only <laughs> scientific one out there. Yo, know, I find a scientific one and Simon finds some schmucky one. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we haven't read it yet. Maybe it's scientific. No, this is but this is but this is uh the average keto person would run across this article. Yeah. Are you calling me average? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Why are you so sensitive today? Are you a Leo birthday? I can't remember when your birthday is. Why don't would that make me sensitive? Yeah, Leos are very sensitive. Oh, really? Yeah. I have two of them in my life, so. Would you like a third? They're fabulous. Would you like a third? (laughs) You're not a Leo, are you? When's your birthday? No, but I don't know much about astrology, but I did go one time and this lady gave me my chart and I think something like my moon is in Leo. Oh, okay. I thought my moons were over my hammy. (laughs) You know that IHOP thing or whatever? Yep. Yep. That was, that was, that was great. That was, that was so good. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm an Aquarius and my moon is in Leo, oh, which means I'm really good at Scrabble. I don't know what that means. I don't okay. know what it means, but, <laughs> uh, so any astrologers me. out there that want to diagnose me and insult me like Carol, Oh, your moon is in Leo. That means you're average. You're very average. <laughs> well, Le- the moon part of you is actually your feminine side. So Oh, wow. Uh, your, Thank you your, for helping me get in touch with my feminine side here on the podcast. That's really Le- great. Leos have great hair, big manes of hair. and Oh, well. I should not have worn a hat, but your, I was. Your, your female side is very hairy. Well, I've just been schlepping and moving everything all day, so I just threw a hat on for the show. I'm, I'm, I'm oh. leaving for Vegas. I'm moving out of this place. I've been watching a house sitting and yeah. Anyways. All right. Article. Let's go. <laughs> Speaking of greatest, the article is from greatest.com. I've never heard of this nice. website before. Uh, and, and you're right. So this is uh, Will, Apple, App, blah, blah, blah. Will Apple Cider Vinegar Help Me Level Up on Keto? And uh, medically reviewed by Kim Chin, who's a registered dietitian. Cool, cool, cool. Written by Kim by Chi or Kim Chin? Kim Chin is what it says. Kim Chin. Oh. Um, and then written by Savannah... It's inter- the, her spelling of Savannah has a capital V. I've never seen that before. Uh, Savannah Shoemaker, uh, who is also a master's of science and registered dietitian, nutritionist, and a licensed dietitian. So we've got uh, the nutritionist in the house here on this one. So, okay. So um, okay. So who finds scientific articles after all? Huh? <laughs> who finds scientific? Okay. Keep going. <laughs> well, it's written by nutritionists. We'll see how scientific it is. Uh, Aren't you a nutritionist? Yes. What are you like uh, putting down the guild? <laughs> uh, we'll see. I haven't read the article. Let's see okay. how they, uh, let's see how they, uh, what their arguments are here. So um, apple cider vinegar. Um, let's see. Oh, and this is written. I mean, this looks like a girl wrote it. I'm going to say, cause it says, no doubt you've heard all the amazing things. Apple cider vinegar can support. Like, can we just do. acknowledge your sexism in the moment yeah. here? Yeah. Can we just acknowledge your your unconscious bias that you just poured out there? It was, there it was what, completely conscious. I admitted it right up front. Uh, I know. I just wanted to be woke and say unconscious bias in a sentence. But it's external. It's external uh, uh, sexism because it, okay. it was internal. I wouldn't have acknowledged it. So. Uh, okay. So All right. Nancy, so read your girly article then. Like, oh look, Nancy copied mine. Her oh, top okay. nuts are going to be macadamia cashews, and my daughter's. Notice her daughters came in third. So, well, I mean, you know, daughters you can make more, but mac nuts you're alone on an island. <laughs> yeah. I guess if you're alone on an island, you can't make more daughters. All right, never mind. <laughs> Keep going. I just lost my scientific. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll, We'll see how that goes. Okay, so apple cider right. vinegar. Um, supporters claim it can help you lose weight, improve digestion, reduce heartburn, remove skin tags, uh, clear up your skin, and more. And if you're on low-carb, high-fat keto diet to lose weight, you may be particularly interested in using 
apple cider vinegar to help boost fat loss. Oh. Um, so I've had a lot of clients that have asked me about, should I take this? I've heard it's really good for me. So this is a very fun article. So, cool. um, but can apple cider vinegar really help on keto or are these claims just ABC? ABC stands for a bunch of crap. That's their lingo in this a scientific article. Can apple uh, cider vinegar really help? I'm going to use that. I'm going to find that out here. after these messages. <laughs> This show is brought to you by, hey, we're actually open for sponsorship. So um, if anybody, uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, that just got, our, got us a second view. So if you miss this, my goal every time is we want every single reaction uh, from Facebook. So we want a thumbs up. We want a heart. We don't want the angry, but also like maybe I'll say something that you're going to yeah, say. Yeah, well, like, maybe you shouldn't angry. insult female authors. I'm just saying, just throwing okay, it yeah. out there. Give me an angry face for uh, sexism. That yeah. I deserve that. I deserve oh, she that. absolutely deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, keep going. All right, so they're going to do some verification. Um, first off, they're looking at um, is it keto? And basically, it's, it's no carbs, so it's going to be keto. That's right. That's that's the bottom of that. Um, so let's see. They're looking at. I, I haven't read this article, so I'm going through it here with all of you. It, apple cider vinegar and weight loss. The key, the key ingredient in ACV is acetic acid, which gives it its, guess what, acidity, and taste, smell, and all-around vinegariness. Um, they, they, researchers suspect that the notes of the benefits or uh, the noted benefits of vinegar are related to that acetic acid. And, um, oh, this is great. You're right. This is scientific. So they have three different studies they're citing here. And so a small study in 2005 showed that apple cider vinegar um, increases fullness when eaten with a carby white bread. Um, and <laughs> number two is better blood sugar control. Handful of studies have found that apple cider vinegar may promote better blood sugar management, keeping blood sugar levels stable. Um, and then number three, more fat loss. So one quality 2009 study found that Vinegar Excuse intake me. of one to two teaspoons a day for 12 weeks was associated with significant reduction in body weight, body mass index, and weight circumference. So I'm going to just plug in right here. The problem with all these studies they've cited is none of them have been on keto. Um, and so um, the, the problem with, well, I'll have to figure out what they say here at the end. But the problem with saying like, so every one of these things that they say that apple cider vinegar benefits Keto does even better than what these studies show, right? So increases fullness. So once people in ketosis generally, and especially following the 10 rules we've been covering in this initial series we're doing, people don't feel hungry at all. And so there isn't any evidence to show that vinegar makes that even more so. Um, also blood sugar control. Keto, keeping carbs low is one of the best, most powerful ways of normalizing blood sugar. So a lot of people that even have uh, diabetes are able to come off all their medications. And the people that I've worked with within just a couple of months, they have normal blood sugar. So again, works even better than um, apple cider vinegar. And then the more fat loss as well. Um, we talked about that. I think that was what we talked about last week where we looked at um, a low fat diet versus keto and the, and the keto diet actually got more fat loss than just low fat diet of the same amount of calories. And so, uh, that's my little, uh, what are we calling me? A dictator? Um, overlord. Uh, over overlord. Uh, that's my overlord. Supreme this ruler. Supreme ruler. Wow. This is taskmaster. You're, you're feeding my ego here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, but hold on. You know if if apple cider vinegar f makes you full and keto makes you feel full, wouldn't combining them make you feel fuller? What's the wrong? What's the problem? Like you have full yeah. house and fuller house. <laughs> Maybe, but some t not not everything uh, uh, works like that, right? Like it's not a necessarily additive, right? So the, as far as like the mechanisms of how that works, it uh, may not take you know be that effect, right? So they were saying you know it makes you feel full when you eat white bread and vinegar together. Like, oh, first of all, but um, you know yeah. we don't we don't know. Um, and uh, Oh, here's okay. Sue's Sharon. She's uh, I've heard a lot of good things about apple cider vinegar and I've always wanted to try it, but I've never tried it. But I Simon would like apple cider better. Yeah, right. Apple cider. Yeah. Can we have apple oh. cider? Or how about just the hard <laughs> cider? No. 
Sue's trying to recruit you to her carby ways. I can tell she wants you to go to uh, London and eat uh, porridge and flax seeds with her. And drink apple, and cider. Drink apple cider. They're <laughs> like subtle hints she's dropping. Like, yeah. you she's know, like, this hey, be really delicious. Simon, my lifestyle's pretty yummy. Flax seeds all you want. Well, I've always been a sucker for a yummy lifestyle. Well, okay. Here's the thing though, Carol. Okay. Are we done with the apple cider or do you have more to say? Well, the only thing left, let's see what they've got. Um, uh, apple cider risks they've got. Um, apple cider vinegar is not risk-free because it's super acidic. It can erode your tooth enamel. And that's actually something that came out more recently is that everybody got on this ACV bandwagon and they were just taking it every morning and it starts to erode your tooth enamel. So uh, you, if you're going to consume it, you want to make sure it's very diluted. But then if, it's like if you consume it with a lot of water, is it still going to have the same benefits, right? So um, it, yeah, so and it can um, irritate the digestive tract as well. And um, don't consume more than four tablespoons a day. Larger doses haven't really been studied and make sure that it's either used in cooking or diluted in at least eight ounces of water so that you don't erode your teeth away. So yeah, that's um, not good. Yeah. They've got some recipes in here. You're going to be really healthy and toothless. Yeah. <laughs> but boy, are you going to be healthy? Might make you popular in, uh, um, with the apple cider. I don't know. Um, so the alternatives they're talking about to apple cider vinegar. They're talking about MCT oil, exogenous ketones. Um, those what do you think about exogenous, erogenous oh, ketones or whatever? We'll, we'll add that to a future. I'm going to type that in the future topics. Okay. Um, future topics. Whole... Erogenous ketones. Okay. Um, the, the TL uh, semicolon DR, too long, didn't read. Um, it's totally keto friendly. Uh, they say it might help, but actually there's no studies that's ever been shown in addition to keto that does anything better than keto does. If you're not on keto, it does, it has some evidence that shows it can help with uh, fullness and blood sugar control and fat loss. But on keto, we don't have any evidence to say that. And, um, and also, yeah, don't, uh, don't, don't drink it straight. You're going to need, you're going to have very expensive dental, uh, surgery, not surgery, but expenses. So, all right, that's it. Good, good article. Thank you. Good choice. Good job. I appreciate your compliments and kind words. Okay. You. Sue's saying you can use apple cider vinegar on your body as well as in your body. Hey, give it a shot. It's great. So I, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and we have very, very hard water here. And it's excellent at getting off hard water stains. So you don't need all those expensive, like, stuff you buy at the store or something like that. I, I learned Ooh. on TikTok, you just put a little bit of vinegar on a Q-tip or a cotton ball, and it just dissolves it immediately. So, oh, okay. TikTok, learn so much. All right. So listen. I may have screwed up a little last week. Oh, did you? So you're not going to get your Denali present then, are you? Whatever. Okay, never mind. I didn't screw up. Keep going. <laughs> no, no, no. I may have screwed up and I don't know, but okay. Confession time. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Well, okay. I started lifting weights again, hard, like power okay. lifting, running, like really working out hard. And it was one day where I like ran, ran really hard. Then I deadlifted. Then I did tons of push-ups, and I did all sorts of like what? Look at your, look at your fans are saying what's new? <laughs> LOL, Nancy. <laughs> oh, we got a thumbs up. Okay, we got one of them. <laughs> Meaning, what's new? Like I screwed up. Oh, <laughs> they know me. Okay, well, oh, listen. I love it. I love we it. haven't even told you yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Let me explain. <laughs> Allow me to explain. I worked out to exhaustion. Like okay. I worked out so hard to where when I was done, I was like, oh, like really pooped. And then I started to get nervous. How, how was that again? How was that? You were like. I was like. Oh. <laughs> Did I do that right? Like, yeah, yeah. No, like meaning like. I walked a mile. Then I did tons of like high intensity, like running, like where you run and then you stop and then you run. 
Then I did a power lifting workout of like heavy weights. Okay. And then I got a little freaked out because I was like, oh my God, everything I've ever read my whole life about weightlifting is you need to up carbohydrates immediately after mm. you need protein and carbs after a workout. So I started to get nervous. So I, um, I, I even, even I, well, after I, I, weeks and my support. Yeah, I, I, I had carbs. I did. I well, had carbs, I, and I ate some fruit, and I ate a little bit of rice, and I carved up again, mm -hmm. and well, which obviously threw me out of ketosis. But what's the deal? Do I need like if I'm lifting weights? Do I need carbs afterwards or what, no. dude? No, dude. There, <laughs> I mean, there's a whole group. <laughs> called keto gains uh that they specialize and their facebook group is like four hundred thousand people in it i don't know hundred thousand four hundred thousand it's a lot and they train people with a ketogenic diet and weightlifting and i'm gonna write this down yeah it's a it's a to it's totally a myth um and they do recommend some kind of a pre-workout thing that's like caffeine and salt and depending on where you're at in your journey they may do a little bit of glucose specifically but not like just any starchy food um but that just depends on where you're at and what you're doing um we've also got um ryan lowry and uh jacob wilson i think is his name let's see let me i'm gonna pull up some photos um there's researchers in florida so when you're down when you're down there doing your show down there you got to see these guys so yeah so um these guys train and they're actually researchers looking at athletic um, performance and weight training. And yeah, like what if you're doing something like running a marathon or you're like, you know, hiking 12 miles or you're, you know. So in that state, so those are actually like cardiovascular uh, training. Those are long distance endurance athlete, athletic, athletic events. You do best burning fat. Um so if you, so just covering the whole weight training thing, you know, we've got a bunch of people that are actually studying that, researching it. And they found that, um, you know, so for example, um, Ryan Lowry and Jacob Wilson, um, they're down there in Florida. They've got an entire, uh, I don't remember what the name of their studios, but they have a whole lab that's specifically about, oh, Keto Academy. That's what it's called. Um, they also wrote the book, um, the Ketogenic Bible. And so let's see. Oh, here's their, their, uh, Ryan Lowry, national champion baseball player. Um, and then Jacob Wilson is a, they're both have doctorates. And so I've listened to them lecture at various conferences, presenting their research. And, you know, not only can you gain plenty of muscle and strength and all of that on keto, um, then you, you don't need these carbs in order to fuel on that. So, and they also have, have you know, they looked at the difference of like, um, you know, just training all the time in keto and ketosis, and then comparing that to doing like weekends off and doing carb ups on the weekends and things like that. And what they found was, is that because it takes three to five days to get back into ketosis after you go out of it from eating overeating carbohydrates, um, that you end up spending most of the week, not even in ketosis, trying to get back to ketosis after a weekend of high carb. And he said that you just end up feeling miserable and then your body can't actually train in the state of, of fat burning. Um, okay. We got, oh boy, juicy. We're give, we're, we're going to give this person. Hello. Y'all we're going to give this person a short leash. I don't know. Let's see. Let's why, why, why? I got I, I just got a sense. Uh, I hope this isn't a, uh, no, 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 no. There for uh, good intentions and not, uh, he's here for the power lifting. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, Sue, so, uh, where's Simon? You've got to get yourself in fit for Vegas. You need to take Carol's advice. Carol, can you eat a lot of fruit and vegetables? Um, no, vegetables, actually, not fruit. Yeah, episode two, um, we talked about, or episode one was about carbs. So um, it's very, very low carbohydrate. So both those things, Sue, have a lot of carbohydrates in them. So um, all right, seafood is good. Ju juicy, That's true. Tell, tell seafood's good. Um, Oh, he's in Finland. Ox, excellent. Nice. We've got three different countries represented here. So, hey, Juicy, what's up? Nice. Welcome. Is it Jesse or Juicy? Uh, um, yeah. So we've got plenty of research that shows like you don't need that. Um, we've got a whole 
training group. Um, you know, I'm very good friends with the owners of keto gains that train people. Um, you don't need those, you don't need those carbohydrates before or after you train. And then like you, you asked about the, um, like long distance things. Um, you actually, when you get your body into fat burning mode and it takes time, so it can take up to 12 weeks to optimize your, um, your body's ability to burn fat as its primary fuel. And that means you need to consistently stay in ketosis, fat burning mode, not kick yourself out for 12 weeks consistently to optimize that state. And okay, um, but, so okay, but let's say, let's say now where I kind of messed up a little bit, but now I'm getting back in it. Yeah. Can I power lift while I'm getting into ketosis? Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, so there is muscle adaptation that happens. And so, um, and so it can take two to three weeks for your muscles to switch over to burning fat for fuel. So what happens initially is so part, you know, part of the course that I have my clients go through it, you know, full nine week of training of explaining like what happens in your body physiologically to even get you to the state of ketosis. So, um, we can do a short version of that now is that, so basically our body doesn't have a very big storage of carbohydrates, but we have nearly limitless ability to store fats. So those are basically just two fuel sources in our body. And we're always going to burn carbohydrates first um, because we don't have the ability to store them. Um, we will store a little bit of uh, carbohydrates in our muscle, which is stored as glycogen, and then we'll store some in our liver as well. Now, if we're on that desert island, imagine again with no food, um, your body will burn through the liver glycogen first as its backup energy source before it's going to start burning your fat reserves. And if you've chronically eaten carbohydrates all the time, your body actually can nearly shut down completely your ability to burn fat from storage. And this is why we get hungry every two to three hours when we're eating a high carbohydrate diet is because we don't have any backup storage of carbohydrates. So we have to keep eating them. And if we're, that's a good sign that your body is stuck in carb burning mode. It can't get the fat is that if you go two or three hours, you get really hungry and then you crash and burn and you're feeling angry and hangry and so hungry and miserable. That's a sign your body is shut off its ability to access fat for fuel. Now, it takes three to five days typically. So when somebody has been stuck in carb burning mode, when they start to restrict their carbohydrates, it takes three to five days for your body to burn up that, uh, li liver glycogen. So I think of that as like, it's your body's bag of sugar in the pantry. It's going to burn through that first before you're going to be able to get into ketosis. And so you have to, that's why you have to keep carbs consistently low for a period of time. And once that liver storage is burned up, then your body's going to have to be, it's going to be forced to look for another fuel source. When it is able to get the fat out of storage, it can burn that fat for fuel. And also then it's going to make ketones from that as another source of fuel as well. And so being in that state where your body's finally starting to burn fat, um, oh, yeah, so Susan's got a good point here. So uh, Keto Savage is another one that does weight training. I think we talked about him last week, actually, too. So he's the one that does, um, you know, he's full on keto and he's won uh, competitions. His wife has also gone on keto and her first weightlifting or bodybuilding competition. She also took like first place in her division as well, too. So those are some people to check out. Um, I've got interview um, with Keto Savage. Robert Sykes is his name. Um, I've not interviewed um, Robert. Ryan Lowry and Jacob Wilson, but, um, definitely have an interview with, uh, Robert Sykes, keto savage. So, um, so anyways, yeah. So your, your body's going to start to go out to burn that fat. It's burning ketones, but it takes time to ramp up that production. And then all of your cells to switch over their, basically their machinery in order to start to burn that fat for fuel primarily as well. Now your muscles on that same trajectory. So let's say you're trying to exercise and work out that whole time. In the beginning, when you're, you know, when they're burning carbs, your muscles can burn carbs really quickly and easily, but also that supply runs out very quickly. So when your muscles are running on carbs, that's why on a normal and a, a marathon, they've got to stop and eat that goo every so often because they run out of, uh, they literally run out of glycogen in their body. They don't have any more carbs to burn. And if they don't, they bonk, right? Like, 
crash and burn, they run out of fuel. And um, if you turn on the fat burning mode though, there you have weak supply. You could run for an entire week and not run out of energy uh, once your body's in a Prove it. <laughs> Let's see well, you run for a week, Carol. All right. Um, That'd be a great episode where we're just running and I'll be with the camera like, Carol, how many days has it been? Run, run, Carol, Forrest, <laughs> run. Uh, it, uh, okay, so you're telling me I screwed up real bad and I didn't have okay. to do that. I know, I know. You're So I'm, I'm listening to this book right now, audiobook, plug for Audible. Um, that uh, It's called Mistakes Were Made, But Not By Me. It's fascinating about the way that the brain works to justify beliefs that we've held. Like it, it's a whole bunch of different things. It was basically about how our memory's false and about how when we believe something to be true for a long time, we are very resistant to change uh, oh, what we okay. believe to be true. Because we want to think that we're smart and we know things and that what we believed was true. And it's it causes cognitive dissonance when we find out that maybe something else is true, the opposite of what we thought. And it's easier. It's easier for our brain to just go like, nah, I'm not going to listen to that because I believe this and I'm a smart person and I believed it a long time. So it's easier to just dismiss the new stuff than, than to give up like what you've learned and thought you learned for sure. Decades. So, okay. Um, yeah. Um, so the muscles that do, so in the very beginning, when your body is in ketosis, your muscles are going to try to burn the ketones for fuel, but it's not your muscles favorite fuel. And so, and so typically the first two to three weeks of being in ketosis, trying to do exercise, you might feel kind of puny, you just feel weaker than you normally would. Um, you're not going to have your best performance. So for my clients, I always say like, if you want to take that time off, you're still going to get plenty of fat burning. Don't worry about trying to force your way through those workouts. At about two to three weeks in, um, your muscles actually will get better at burning fat for fuel. So those, the machinery basically that's in the cells of what kind of fuel source it can burn um, is, is shifting and it's reorganizing and it, your cells are making new ways of burning these fuels. And so somewhere in two to three weeks is where that starts to optimize. And so if we're up to look how many viewers we got right now, this is great. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, and uh, so, oh, we just lost a couple. <laughs> well, you blew um, it, Carol. So, you were doing know, great so and then you blew I, it. I blew, blew it. Um, so at about two or three weeks <laughs> in, your muscles then switch over to burning fat for fuel. <laughs> and... But for a minute there, we were really killing it for like a minute. And then, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So your, your workouts at about two or three weeks in, probably three or four, are going to get a lot better and easier. Okay. Another part we talked about however many weeks ago, too, is making sure you get the salt right, too. So when you're working out, you need a lot more salt, too, especially on keto anyways. And then, um, so... Uh, Juicy drinking plenty of water with unprocessed salt every day. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Lots of salt. So one of the things that okay. most people don't understand about the way our body works is that every muscle contraction re uses salt, potassium and salt get switched. And so the more exercise you do, the more salt you need too. So. Okay. Okay. I can yeah. do that. Um, so, so Susan's giving you false hope if you're getting back into you may be able to get back into ketosis the next day. Was Likely that false hope? Yes, I can. You don't know me. You don't know me. Uh, <laughs> I can. I, Susan, I, you're right. <laughs> Carol is just mean and she's just a restrictive I'm a, parent. I'm an overlord and I say, no, you can't. Um, I don't probably, really test the ketones. I got to buy one of those meters. I know you showed it to me and I'm just slacking. Okay. But on a positive note, it's not the only thing I'm slacking in my life. So there, there's other things too. So it's let's uh, see if Nancy's here to call you out on that. Let's see. Uh, what about people high blood pressure? Do you still need the extra salt? Um, like Simon said at the beginning of the show, Nancy, anyone who has any medical condition, you need to consult your doctor. Um, I work with my clients on that one on one. Uh, you know, so if people have. Um, so, you know, on the one hand, most people I've worked with high blood pressure, it comes down to normal very quickly. Um, and again, that's a, that's a medical questionnaire, but most people it's coming down and, and we still need to add salt. But again, that's going to be something that's going to be important to work with your doctor on, uh, and also to work with a qualified healthcare professional, um, and how to do that in a safe way. So, um, okay. 
but but uh, but if you get a copy of the book, Nancy, th- he talks about how actually it's more likely that high blood pressure is caused from too little salt than it is from too much. So that's a fun little uh, fun little read there. So. Oh yeah, I always remember all the fun times reading about salt in my life. Okay, so I remember as a kid hanging out, question. just spending my Saturday afternoons reading about salt. That's a fun read. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm a nerd. I'm a nutrition nerd. I'm in the right field. You're not. That's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. Hey, so you know what? Uh, should we get to the actual topic of our? Let's do it. Our show today. Do it. Let's Thanks do it. everyone for watching. So, um, if you're if you're new to the show, um, we're, we've been starting out. This is episode nine, and the first ten episodes, I'm going over the the ten rules to follow to get started with keto. The easiest way to get started for maximum results or restarted. So, if you're somebody who did keto in the past and you're struggling to get going again, these are our ten rules. So, today is number nine in that series. So, after you're done hanging out with us today, go back and watch the other ones. Go back and watch or listen. And um, so today is number easy rule number nine. And I tricked you all at the beginning when we were talking about nuts and seeds, because number nine is, oh, I should skip up, skip those nuts and seeds, at least in the beginning. Um, And I'm going to tell you all about why. No nuts and seeds. I know you're just like, well, hold on away from me. What if you're on a desert island alone? Then could you have nuts and seeds and yeah, because you'd probably have to harvest them for yourself. What's chocolate salt? That's now a, you're talking. yeah, that's a brand element, uh, drink element. I think we've talked about that on past episodes. Um, actually, uh, there's four owners of that company, and two of them are the Keto Gains guys that I just mentioned earlier, too, as well. So, excellent. Oh, okay, product. I'm um, making notes, I'm taking notes. Yeah. LMNT. Yeah. Yep, they have a whole bunch of flavors, they've got spicy ones, they've got uh, watermelon, raspberry, citrus, and then the chocolate one. Um, Susan is right. I actually, most days I'll put that in my coffee as well too. So if you, uh, if, if we uh, meet in the middle in Vegas, I'll bring you some samples. Do they have a nut flavored one? No, I was trying to think of a flavor that, no, they oh, don't. Oh, oh, I tried that nut pod creamer that we talked about. Remember <laughs> yeah. we talked about the nut pods? Yeah, I was, was at my mom's movie? house stealing espresso because she has a, this Nespresso coffee maker that's delicious. So, you know, I'll just like pop in and grab one. And uh, yeah, and then I go to open to get the cream and she's got the nut pods. I'm like, oh, well, well. Of you. Did you like it? Nah, it was all right. Yeah, I don't I don't like them. I don't buy them. Um, okay. They're kind You're of really okay. All right, keep going. Yeah, and uh, Susan's just, so she's a, she's agreeing. No nuts for you. Um, oh, okay, great. This is really lovely. I have everybody trying to <laughs> thwart me. Good. They're all first. They're it was all, no uh, alcohol. Then it was no nuts. Okay, then, so, so Susan loves nut pods. Uh, the cinnamon swirl. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. It was a marshmallow flavor she had. Hmm. So, so one of the nice things about them is they're unsweetened. We talked about that. On yeah. Our- past episode about how avoiding sweeteners will really help go a long way. And actually next week, we're going to talk even more about craving triggers. So, um, so I usually will go with uh, real cream or nothing. So, um, wow. all right. Easy you just go nine. bear, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll do the chocolate salt, like Susan was saying as well. And iced coffee a lot of times out here. What are we, you know, 100 degrees today, I think. Let's see. Just for fun. It is currently, oh, only 97. Um, It's kind of cold. Um, Yeah, so no nuts and seeds. Okay, so I'm going to, first I'm going to tell you the normal route that people go when they try to do keto. Then I'm going to tell you the truth. And we're going to talk about this thing called the highly palatable foods. Um, Really fascinating concept that will, um, that is something I work with my clients to help them avoid overeating. And then I'm going to give you my recommendations. So the normal route on keto, everyone thinks that that nuts are a great source of protein and healthy fats. And so they have to be keto friendly. That's everybody's, um, oh, we got a new subscriber. I think, uh, juicy just, uh, 
Excellent. Thanks for watching. Glad you're having Welcome. a good time. So yeah, he seems to know his stuff too. How long have you, how long have you been doing? Yeah. Eat how long is sand keto? How long have you been ketogenic? And Juicy. I wonder if if this is kind of the same thing as telling somebody to kick rocks, like eat sand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Instead of nuts, eat sand. Um, that's also curious how long you've been doing keto. Yeah. Let us know. All right, Carol, keep going. Keep telling us what we can't okay. do in our lives. Continue. Okay. All right. So, but most people think of nuts, like in the traditional nutrition world, they think like, oh, nuts are good, like healthy fats, the good kind of fat. Yeah. And they also think that they're a good source of protein. But what the truth is, is that nuts are really high in calories. They're not a very good source of protein and they're an incomplete protein. So basically the protein kind of like doesn't really even count. And they're very high in carbohydrates. Most people don't even, because we've been trained to think of nuts as fats, they don't realize how many carbohydrates are in nuts. And, you know, so a tiny little handful like this, like maybe like six or seven macadamia nuts has about six grams of carbohydrates. And if we're trying yeah. to stay under 20 for the whole day, a little tiny bit of nuts takes up a lot of your carbohydrates. And who can eat six or seven macadamias nuts <laughs> or pecans or almonds or any of those other things, right? And so this all fits together, right? So back at the beginning, we talked about how important it is to track. And if you're not weighing out your nuts and you're not tracking them, you have no idea. You think like, oh, these are just healthy fats. I can eat all of them I want. Um, so they're, they're a trap. They're a pitfall because of the way that we think of them. We think that they're healthy fat. So therefore, they're a free food. Um, and so it's almost always what's happened. So in, in addition to that, they're really hard to have portion control. Like one ounce of nuts basically is that tiny little like quarter of a cup of nuts or less. And nobody eats that little. Um, and the reason is because of this thing called um, highly palatable food. So I studied this concept a long, long time ago from uh, Stephen Guillenay. Um, he's a Seattle researcher, obesity. He's, he's a researcher on the neuroscience of obesity. And I've done an interview with him. He was one of my very early influencers when I was going through school long before I knew anything about keto. I always wanted to figure out the puzzle of like, what is it that makes us overeat? And so uh, this concept says that whenever foods have carbs and fat in them, we are wired as humans to eat as much of them as possible. So if you have a steak, you'll eat a, a normal portion and be satisfied. But anything that has carbs and fats, you're wired to eat tons and tons and tons, almost as much as available before you're, you even have an off switch of that. So classic uh, examples of carbs plus fats. Okay, so in addition to nuts and seeds, we've got things like all kinds of junk food are carbs and yeah, fats chips. together. Yeah, chips, every baked good you can think of, you know, cookies, snack, snack, anything, anything snack foody, all fast food. And so part of why we have a problem with bet you can't just eat one is that it hits this part of the brain that is wired to eat as much as possible of that. And all of those foods are always going to be high calorie along with triggering this part of the brain that makes you overeat it. And so that's part of why it's nearly impossible to have just a few of them and go, mm, I'm so satisfied. I don't want any more macadamia nuts. Um, and so it's just, our brains are wired this way. It's not about. They're so willpower. good though. Yeah, they are. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So it sounds exactly like what I'm point. hearing you say is just to reiterate, only su we should only eat sunflower seeds. <laughs> the dill pickle flavor. Is that what I'm understanding? Well, measure out a portion. See if it fits within your carb allowance. Okay. So J Jesse, uh, been working out almost uh, nine to 10 years, but now nice. he's working. So are you doing, Jesse, are you doing, um, Jesse or Juicy? I don't know. Um, are you doing um, like a keto gains protocol, keto savage? Are you doing um, low carb when you're doing your your weight training? Tell us how. Tell us more about that. So, um, the other thing about nuts and seeds. Um, There's another is, thing. Yes. Well, you haven't done enough already. You have to nope. do another thing. I do you not do you not see my pattern here. I love to explain the why so that people have like are motivated to do it rather than just like nope, I'm a dictator. I'm the uh, omnipotent oppressor. 
and uh, you can't because I said so. Uh, oh, wait, who's we got Charlie here. Butterfly Sue has left. What? How do you know, Charlie? Oh, you saw her leave. <gasps> Did we lose Sue? Well, she'll come back. She, she Where are you, Sue? Back. Hey, Charlie, welcome to the show. Um, just, uh, J Jesse, Jesse eats avocados and eggs. There you go. Sounds delicious. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So the other thing about nuts, if we think about the way that they exist in nature, so kind of the example though, with your sunflower seeds about you're eating them in a shell, right? And it takes, takes quite a bit of work to get them out. Yeah. And so I remember good. as a child, you know, going to my grandparents' house and they had that wooden bowl of nuts still in their shells and it had the like the metal cracker, cracker yeah yep, yep. and you know the par the adults would all be sitting around talking about boring crap and then for fun i'd be like oh let me see if i can crack one of these nuts open back and when I'd you had to it. earn your nut yes and just exactly. come in a canister you had to earn it yes not like these kids nowadays that don't even earn their nuts yes exactly precisely my point these kids nowadays don't understand how hard it is to work for a nut i don't I, even know what's the matter with these kids i grew up a poor child in oregon i had to work for my nuts it's a work for your nuts and by the time my nut because by the time i got that one nut out because You're it's not done. roasted and salted it was so much work i was just like i don't even taste yeah yeah like i'm over it. Worth it yeah one so portion control so if you want nuts and seeds especially nuts so seeds are a little well it depends on which kind of seed but nuts especially buy them shelled you're gonna have automatic portion control right there because it's yeah. so hard to get to them but nowadays we go to costco and we got buy the five pound bag that's already roasted yeah. and salted and then you go to the store now too and then they've got the the honey roasted and the chocolate covered it's like we need them to taste even better to eat more of them like all of that is, is adding another layer of making us crave it and eat even more of it, right? So yeah. keep in mind, food manufacturer's goal is to get us to eat as much food as possible and crave them so we eat more. And um, so that's that's another reason why, like, they're so easy to uh, accessible. They're highly rewarding, highly palatable. Uh, they do taste really great, especially when they're roasted and salted. And so all of that is empowering you to understand, like, why it's so hard to control them. And if you're trying to, like, it's kind of a, you know, you're trying to play in, like, I don't know, who do you, who are you to think you're, you're more powerful than the way your brain works, really? So. Uh, okay, who are you so, to tell me I'm not? Susan puts sliced <laughs> almonds on my Asian chicken salad. Oh, that sounds good. For 10 grams. Yeah. So yes. what, my recommendation, my recommendation is to take a break. So if you're trying to get started on keto. Okay. And or you're trying to get restarted, commit to 30 days with no nuts or seeds. Okay. Um, and that way you're going to have, you're going to get lots of results from, if, especially if you follow all 10 of the rules that we've covered in the series. Well, this is nine. So you're gonna have to wait till next week to watch the next one too. But if you follow all 10 rules, follow them for 30 days, commit to those 30 days, you're going to very likely, especially if you've consulted with your doctor, healthcare provider, if you have any medical conditions, um, mm -hmm. eat, you're going to get into ketosis as fast as possible. You're going to drop as much fat as possible. And you're going to also get rid of cravings, which is part of what my, um, you know, me merging the psychology and, and nutrition of keto together as well. So, um, Oh, Sue, I love that you're asking this question. Okay. So Carol, uh, doesn't, don't nuts give you energy as well. Um, so let me address that. What is energy? Energy is a code word in nutrition for calories. Yes. Nuts give you lots of calories. That's exactly what I said. Um, everything that we eat has to be converted into something else before we get, we, our body can use it as energy. And so, yes, nuts give you energy. And by energy, you mean calories. They give us lots of calories. That's the problem with them is they give us more calories than we need. Um, and so the only thing that gives us directly energy without just converting it into our body, burning it as fuel is going to be something like um, caffeine or methamphetamines or, you know, those things directly, cocaine, those directly give then us energy. you lose lots of weight. <laughs> but food itself, the code... For energy. So there's all these recipes. I, I have a good laugh with my friends about this once in a while. It's like, 
you'll find these um, recipes online for energy balls. Energy is code for calories. Like none of us need more energy density in our in our food. We we need less of it. So, um, and none of us need more methamphetamine. Oh, Sue, Sue thinks you need lots of uh, lots of energy and nuts when you go to Vegas. I don't. She's got some wild fantasy of what you're going to be doing there. So yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing because my brother in law and me got gym memberships for the week that we're there. Oh, nice. I'm going to work out three hours a day. I'm going to get hardcore. Slow down. No. What do you mean slow over, down? Why? Because over, overtraining doesn't get you fit faster. Oh, yeah. It's going to get gangster, dude. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going Navy SEAL training. I'm going to do okay. it in the morning, in the middle of the day, and at night. All and right, then I have comedy you. shows, too, that I got to do. So All I don't right. want to get too crazy, but I'm going to work out like two, three hours a day. I hope that uh, in two weeks we we're not... Personal update isn't Simon tore a rotator cuff or something. So we're like Simon's dead now. <laughs> the Simon <laughs> Memorial episode. <laughs> we're gonna have the, you're gonna have the Simon Kaufman Memorial episode. We remember Simon. Everyone says a kind word. <laughs> and I remember the time he said he went, Oh <laughs> no, dude, I'm gonna get huge, Carol. I'm gonna get ripped and powerful. Okay, hey, Ju Juicy Jesse, can you give him a little pep talk about, like, is working out three hours a day going to make him get ripped uh, faster than if he's actually working out? In no, 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 it's not about faster. It's just about I have nothing to do, so I'm just going to get gangster with it. I'm going to do – so I'm going to do eat keto, get yelled at by Carol for not eating keto properly, <laughs> lift weights, eat, going to go to meals, I'm going to sit by the pool. Oh, and I'm going to do stand-up. I got stand-up comedy shows I'm going to go do. Nice. I'll be at Jokesters on, I think it's the 28th. And one of those nights, I'll be at the LA Comedy Club in Las Vegas. Nice. And I'll be uh, sitting by the pool. And uh, what what if one of those hours you're doing some yoga? That too. I'm going to do some yoga in the morning. Okay. I'm going to do in the, Well, no, because I've been doing uh, uh, restorative type stuff. I've been doing uh, going online and doing these um, joint opening, like hip opening, shoulder opening exercises, mobility drills. I've been doing qigong, dude. I'm getting gangster, dude. You don't even know, Carol. Pretty soon you're gonna be like, whoa. You're gonna, you're gonna not, you're gonna get rid of your firefighter calendar. You're gonna have a Simon calendar. You're gonna have your own keto gangster sign too. Um yeah, so Sue, Sue's suggesting that you, uh, when you're in Vegas, you should go to the bar too because they have lots of nuts at the bar. No, I stopped I drinking. Did I tell you, I told you. Also, I, I think in uh, in post COVID times, Sue, they probably don't have like handfuls of nuts they're giving out at the bar anymore. But I know things are different for her in London there. So, um, see, Nancy says you're going to burn yourself out if you and you'll never work. Is that a challenge? <laughs> Am I being challenged? Because I will rise to the challenge. We 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 know. I will elevate. I will watch Rocky you... every morning, and then whatever. I'll that's watch Rocky to... for a training sequence. That's then the way I'll... to motivate Simon is telling me can't do it. Yeah, like Carol does that all the time. I Carol tells you... me I can't drink alcohol, and then I do. Ooh, she tells me I can't. I can't. Uh, Susan sign, signing up for a Simon calendar already. We got, we have okay. to have we Oh, yeah. To Get your pre orders in. I'm telling you. <laughs> Simon calendar. No, now I feel challenged. And now, thank you, Sue, for your belief, your unwavering belief in me. <laughs> oh, Ma Mama Nancy says she doesn't want you to hurt yourself. See, she cares. I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm in a gym. I'm fine. I'm going to be like, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't gamble. I mean, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm going to hang with family where it's a family trip. A lot of us are going to be there. So I do want to spend time with loved ones. And my sister wants to go to all these restaurants. So I've been going ahead to look at the menus to know what she loves. This It's called like Momofuko. She can't stop talking about this restaurant or whatever that she wants to go to. So I look, they have a whole fish bronzino that I can Ooh, get. Nice. Yep. So is it, is it a Italian or is it Chinese? What kind of? It's an Asian it? restaurant. Okay. Oh, it bronzino, like like I real... believe, is the preparation. Not It's not the type of fish. It's the preparation. Okay. With the head on it, looking up at you with one eye like, hey, why are you eating yeah. me? 
That's so good. So fresh. With yeah. the eyeball looking up at you like, I was just swimming and then now I'm here. And you compliment the chef if you actually eat the eyeball too. Really? I think so. I don't know. I'm you just made that up. Thought, That's a, yeah, you're tricking I me. I did. I did. You're tricking me. <laughs> oh, darn it. You almost ate it. Um, okay. Here's more Nancy advice. Eat, work out, eat, work out, eat, yes. work out. Oh, wait. Eat, eat work out. Eat, work out, eat, work out. Three times fast. Say that, Carol. Go. <laughs> Say it three times fast. Uh, eat, work out, eat, work out, eat, work out. Peter work Piper out. picked a pack of pickle peppers. Yes. All right. Simon sold seashells at the seashore, whatever. <laughs> Did you? No, no, you no. Ever? Well, you know what? I'm just, I love working out. And I thought to myself, it's going to be a good challenge in Las Vegas. I have this membership. I'm going to get hardcore with it for a week. Yeah. Or at least the first well. day, and then I'll just trail off after that. But the plan <laughs> is to get, get hardcore workout. Well, well yeah. yeah. If you work out seven hours the first day, then then you don't have to work out the next seven, six days. What if just we – yeah. All, yeah. Oh, it's going to – well, it'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'll listen to my body for sure. I'm not going to push my body okay. past the point where there's pain. But, uh, you know – you have Nancy Nancy's voice in your head, like "Don't hurt yourself, Simon." I don't know. That's not exactly what Nancy sounds like, but my I haven't practiced my Nancy impression. So, um, all right, ju what's Juicy saying here? Uh, keto may not be best for things that require short bursts of energy, such as weightlifting or spinning. Ah, well, Carol disagrees. <laughs> Carol, uh, our overlord, <laughs> if done correctly, fat loss maximizing. Um, yeah. Well, uh, should we, should we wrap this up? We actually have a shout out for, a. um, oh, Sue's back. She is back. Um, Sue would never shout leave out for one of our reviews. So, um, okay. Any other questions you've got for me or we, uh, no, I'm feeling good about this. I'm okay. feeling good about this. Well, I'm next week, I'm really, next week I'm really excited. So next week is going to be, um, rule number 10, um, you guys can need to check that out. It's one of my favorite topics to nerd out on. It's the origins, um, little known origins of cravings and secrets to ending them actually. So I'm going to talk all about like, what are the psychological cues that trigger cravings in the first place? How do we avoid them? And how do we actually end cravings rather than just coping with them and fighting through them over and over again? So, um, that's, so this that's has our been topic your, for next week. This has been your trigger craving warning. Yes. So I might, I maybe probably next week, just a, a teaser. I'm probably going to ask as a starter question, like what foods do you crave? Um, and, um, Charlie Ward must know Sue butterfly. So, uh, shout out to butterfly Sue. All right. From Charlie Ward. Excellent. So, Hey Simon, you okay, I know this is so horrible, but there's this ice cream shop that I took my little niece to that had this like fruit loop ice cream. That was so good. It was ice cream with little fruit loops in it. That's what I crave. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <What are> you... <laughs> That's next week's topic. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, okay. So we got a review that came in. Do you want to, you want to read this review? That I'll came read in? the view. Okay. All right. Review. Hi there. Had a good chat and a good laugh tonight. Thanks for my first time on here to definitely be coming back for more chat. And that's from Sue Butterfly. Nice. Sue, I think. So yeah. yeah. So leave leave a shout out for us. Leave a review, and we'll give you a shout out on the show. And you know, press like on the video if you have a friend that needs to uh, have an abusive overlord. Yell at them until they get in keto. We have Carol, so join us. Share the share with them, and we'll be coming to you live from Las have Vegas. I'm on the to, Las Vegas Strip. I'm going to have to see if that domain is taking. I'm, instead of Keto Carol, I'm going to have to switch it up to uh, Keto Overlord. Um, <laughs> uh, Sue's asking, uh, so when you do your stand-up comedy, uh, are you going to mention Keto and how Carol's helped you? Shout oh, out yeah. To crowds love friend. that. I'll even flex. I, my whole plan is what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out in a Speedo and just flex. It's going to be great. Oh, my God. I'm going to be there then. Sue, oh, thank yeah. you so much for writing the review for us. Thanks for being here. You're very fun each week. So we appreciate that so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. 
Okay. Thank you, everyone. We'll no, see but, you soon. It, no, but in oh. all seriousness, it does. It is motivational, at least for me. I don't know about the rest of them, but to come and like have a place to touch base, get some information, ask my stupid questions, share my faults and mistakes, and just like kind of have that whole community feel. It does get me back on track. So that's good. Not just floating out on the ether or alone on a desert island eating macadamia nuts. I'm actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's our, 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 fellowship here grows and support it's fun to hang out with you guys and you can see everybody cares about you they're gonna give you a hard time a little bit but uh and juicy says good. one and a half hours is good training time but don't break yourself he says here put that one up oops uh this one yeah yeah no exactly i'm not gonna be lifting for more than that what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start with some cardio in the morning whether it's like a yoga or even a qigong or like some type of thing you know maybe ride the bike then I'm going to come back later. I'm going to do an hour and a half training, whatever. And then later at night, I might do something else. You know, I'm going to split it up. I'm not going to do three hours straight. You know what I mean? But I'm just going to I'm just going to push myself. Maybe it's swimming in the pool. Maybe it's, uh, you know, something. I'm just going to try to try to see and try to push myself as much as I can. So that's the plan. So so Charlie's here as a referral from Sue. Apparently he knows Sue. So that's awesome. nice. Sue's telling her friends. Tell more. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Have a, Have fun, a fun night. night. Yes. Thank you, Susan, for being here. Thanks Thank for your you, first Susan. Order from Prime and Calendar. New tribe from. Yeah, New we City. are. Uh, so do not come out into your speedos. You will clear the straight club. The club straight away break yourself. <gasps> How do you? Is know that a me? challenge? Are you challenging me on that? I feel like. <laughs> Well, okay. First, I got to work out and get into ketosis. Then maybe I'll, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not really, but my point is that uh, my point is I'm very motivated, which is good. Yeah, I'm yeah. feeling a lot of internal motivation to clean up my diet through the ketogenic uh, aspect and also lift weights. I went out, I invested in some workout equipment and we're going to do this. We're going to get back in shape. Coming out of COVID, we all need this. I mean, we've been sitting on our asses, at least some of us. And, uh, you know, the world, I mean, we, we saw what unhealthiness can do to people and it's time to just get it going. Yeah. Get it going. The words of the wise Simon. Get Word that. to your mother. What, what month are you going to put that little quip on for your new calendar? My quip, my calendar quip. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. Like, oh, it yeah. should be a calendar with me flexing every month in a speedo with a, with a, a some advice. Yes, yes. Some good advice. <laughs> All right. Excellent. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same place, every week here. So we'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.